Hi there, Denise Ramon. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing well. It's Friday. Yay! Sun, sun is out. Yes, yes. And uh, you guys, um, you guys can get in touch with her at deniseramon.com. She's not only a medium, she does healing. She's just amazing. So check her out, deniseramon.com. And of course, Eric, I love you. Doesn't seem like it's been that long since I talked to you. <laughs> he says, I love you too, mom. He said, no, it hasn't. Been. Uh, he's he says you've been kind of busy, but he does come to me in the color yellow today. A really oh. bright, beautiful, um, like a sunny yellow. That's what I'm, but that's where, and I felt that when I was like getting my room ready for this, that lighting the candle and all that. And it, he's just very yellow, very bright. Which the is, color of happy. That's what I, it's supposed he, to be. Okay. He said, hey, and that may be why I'm just, I feel real happy. I feel like I'm you know getting to see what the prize is oh a and, prize. And all so, right so we'll just see what this is about okay well we're going to have questions from the community about south africa or i like to say south africa africa because that's how they say it africa i love that africa uh so i've got the first question here will cyril uh, no i know nothing about south Af south africa me they, either they make good wines but and they had apartheid and all that Will Cyril, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president, okay, live and learn, survive his latest dilemma regarding the theft at his game farm? Wow. So, Eric, what do you think? <sighs> survive? You know, Eric tells me, he says, this has really taken a toll on him. Mm -hmm. And the way he says, I feel like, oh, like, uh, like he was like betrayal. Because mm -hmm. uh, I feel like he was just totally betrayed with this. And, and um, that part is very devastating um, because I feel like it triggered him in some areas of betrayal from years past you know and i feel yeah. like maybe before he got into office or did anything like that yeah. um eric says that has not been decided yet okay. that has not been decided yet and i feel like he's the deciding factor if which way he wants to take this okay because it's what like he's not? almost in a it's almost like he's in a a depression because of all of this yeah I feel like it's whoever, whatever they did, it's like people that he knew some somehow or another. So that's worse than the loss probably is the betrayal. Eric says both, both. I'm going to look it up. But meanwhile, will the South African economy improve in the months to come? Eric says no. Oh, when will it? And why not? Well, because it's, it took years, you know, it's like, he says, it's like somebody's been taking off chunks of the economy for years, you know, like they've been doing it sneakily, you know, where they were sneaky doing it to where mm -hmm. it wasn't so obvious. And then it started getting real obvious. And then the momentum was up. Eric shows me, it's like Pac-Man, that machine. So now it's going to take time to get it back. Um, oh. And I, I'm asking Eric when, and he's telling me, we should see a turnaround, start seeing stuff around June. And I'm asking him what year. He says next year. Okay. Well, what, um, why, why is the economy taking a toll? Is it purely because of COVID or, or what? Um, Eric says, well, everywhere, you know, kind of cratered because of COVID. Yeah. But he says, you know, um, COVID, but it was even before COVID just really, put a damper on things because it was already sad. And now this really put it on there. And he says, because um, he's telling me for everything, like for travel, for yeah. business. Yeah. Um, he says a lot of people travel there for business. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know anything, but he says just everything, you know, just everything, just it affected everything. But, um, and not a lot of people want to travel there right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm reading here. Arthur 
Frazier, the former head of the South African State Security Agency, the country's spy agency, walked into the, a police station in Johannesburg and filed a criminal um, complaint against President Cyril Ramaphosa. Frazier accused him of kidnapping, bribery, money laundering, and concealing a crime in relationship to the alleged theft of $4 million from his Fala Fala farm. In a 12-page warrant statement accompanied by photographs, documents, and closed-circuit television footage of the alleged theft taking place. So Ramaphosa comes back with a statement confirming the robbery on the farm in February. I guess that came out in February. Um, saying proceed, proceeds from the sale of the game were stolen, but denies any wrongdoing or criminal conduct. So what happened? Did is he involved in any way? So that explains why the why the 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 deep feeling of devastation, the depression mm -hmm. and stuff, and about will he recover, um, and the betrayal, all of that that explains. Yeah. And so um, I'm asking Eric, did he do that? Um, Eric says mm, Eric is showing me no, but there are people around him who were involved in it. That he knew. Well, according to Fraser, criminals broke into Fala Fala Wildlife Farm um, in on February 9th, 2020, and discovered large sums of dollar bills hidden in various pieces of furniture. He alleged that the housekeeper, whose identity is being protected, discovered the stash and messaged her brother, who knew a gang that could carry out the robbery. The gang allegedly included four Namib Namibian citizens and two South Africans who gained interest, interest, no entry into the premises by cutting the wire perimeter and entering through a window of the main farmhouse. This was captured on CCTV footage. Uh, okay, so the president, who said who said in a statement that he was abroad at the time, claims to. Uh, reported the incident to the um, Presidential Protection Police Unit. Upon return, he asked his head of security, so-and-so, to investigate the incident. So, I don't know. The housekeeper, uh, I don't know. Eric says that's clear as mud, is what he says. Yeah. The housekeeper, oh, the housekeeper and alleged perpetrators were later paid nearly $1,000, $10,000 for their silence, Frazier says. But, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, Ramaphosa's correct, and and I'm asking Eric did his did he have money stashed in there? And Eric said, um, Eric says he did have money stashed in there, but not like it, it, Eric says not like they're exaggerating. Now, does is he a hundred percent honest and all this other stuff? Of course not. Which one? Which politician is? You know, there's yeah. something that's you know, but. Um, but Eric says, um, all he's saying is this is clear as mud. And um, there's stuff that this president stands against that people really don't like. And, I'm, and the way he says that, I feel like, um, like about crime is what he's saying you know, about wanting to put a stop to things, certain things or whatever. And I wouldn't be surprised if this president just stepped away from his position, mm. either when time is up for him yeah. or before time is up for him. It's So I don't know what's going to come first, but it's like Eric shows me he's just like sitting back in a corner, very devastated by this. Mm. So is all of this true? And Eric says, you know, they can make things look real. Oh, yeah. But of course, you know, he's having to reevaluate some of the things that he has done that weren't so nice. And it could yeah. be from infidelity to, I don't know not paying okay. somebody enough or whatever. So was he against crime? He was, uh, was he fighting against? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because this yes. next question, will the government ever be able to curb the crime in South Africa? There seems to be an uptick in crime almost everywhere. Well, and Eric says, you know, that crime there is, you know, and it, just like in all countries, you know, you got 
the people here and then you got this other level of crime that's going on. And then, so this president is, Eric tells me this president is not, is like fighting against that, but okay. but you get to see what happens when you start going against the grain. People don't, he says people create things, you know. Um, well, why would people not be for? Because it disrupts their, livelihood because then they can't keep doing what they're doing oh like we're talking about the corrupt the ones who are benefiting by the this swell in crime yes and so you know they have little gangs and then that little gang has another gang that's over this gang and then another gang over this gang and then you know it's a chain of events so yeah not good can this government ever stop the corruption that continues on a daily basis Sounds familiar. I know. <laughs> Eric says, you know, he's showing me down the road, they're they're gonna, it's it's really gonna take a, a turn to where it's not as corrupt, but but there's a lot behind the scenes that, that that's going on that he says a lot of us don't know, but some of us know because all of the crime is, he says, it's connected to um, human trafficking and oh. and all of that other stuff, you yeah. know, that goes on with that. Blood so, diamond trade, maybe? Yes. And, you know, just a lot that goes on over there because he says over there, there's the very wealthy and then everybody else falls underneath. Oh, yeah. Oh. And he says, um, so there, it will eventually, but, you know, get to a, calmer place but i don't see that happening anytime soon and that's because there's just so much to unravel is is, is it a deep state problem that's uh, occurring in south africa yeah oh my god i don't know how to upend the deep state all over the world it's just so terrible but well it's, doing it's it a piece greed and money power you know but it's but we're doing it and that's why all of this stuff is coming to the surface, he, Eric is saying, in different parts of the world. So this stuff can get exposed. He says uh, it's it has to be exposed before we can start getting rid of it. Yeah, sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yes. Ugh. So yeah. what, what caused the uptick in crime? Maybe you said, and I just glazed over, but. Well, the, the crime is, it all has to do with Eric, Eric says a lot of it has to do with fear, you know, the yeah. fear because there's a lack over there, he says. Yeah. So there's a lot of that going on. And so when you're desperate, you do things that you normally wouldn't do. And Eric is saying, so it create, you know, that creates crime and things. But what happens is, is that's when those gangs see the people who are vulnerable and ask them, well, here's and i'm just using this a dollar figure here's five hundred dollars if you go do this well then it just starts expanding from there oh okay i get it will we ever see a better life for south africa i think we kind of touched on this but eric says yes, yes. Will, of course but when and what will it take well eric says we will but he says and there's a lot going on um <clears throat> over there in Africa as a whole and the surrounding areas too, where things are getting uncovered. Um, you know, it's, um, they're shaking the rug out, he's telling me, but it's not going to happen soon. It, it just takes time because people just won't believe this stuff, you know? No, they won't take it seriously. No stuff that's coming to the surface. Oh, yeah, right. Sure. Are you kidding me right now? So exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like here in the U.S., you know, things are happening. There's a lot of people that are, there's no way that could happen. And then you have people that are to the other, like, yes, it can happen. So it's, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's going to have to happen to them personally on a personal level. And, you know, for people to finally get it, I guess, right? Eric says, yes, but then you have one person that wakes up to this 
and then they start talking and and then that loosens uh, up the seeds in the soil for it okay. to start sprouting and then they go tell people eric always gives me an allergy of one person tells uh, one person and that person tells 10 and then 10 and 10 and 10 so it's growing okay. and it's growing because look it's eric says because what's happening over there in south africa Look what we're doing in the U.S. about uncovering things and also yeah. in Canada and other countries, you know. So, uh, yeah. So, so said, maybe within okay. a decade, you think there's hope? Eric says, yes, he says in a decade, you'll start seeing a big difference. Um, he says their um, judicial system is not that good oh and so yeah, we're going to see here <laughs> yeah so that's going to, you're going to see shifts in that they're not going to like leave a door open for a habitual offender of something that you can tell that has no concerns of changing okay and so yeah and eric says one of the big things right now is they're picking on real young kids to do things Oh, really? Because, yeah, because oh, um, God. he says the the repercussions aren't as great, you know, so they pick the young kids because they know nothing will, you know, like it's, they tell the kids, well, you know, nothing will happen or something. Yeah. But so that's kind of, there's, Eric shows me there's like some, like a, some rotten eggs in that system and they're going to start cleaning out the stench he says and you'll see he says in a decade we'll be able to see a big difference he says a yeah. big difference that's mm -hmm. good are the recent floods in Kuala, uh, Kuala, kwazulu natal i don't know if that's how you pronounce it there was so much damage why only in this prov province twice in a row like is it karma based what's going on um Well, Eric says that there's a lot of, um, you know, he's showing me like those floods, even though it's very damaging and leaves people devastated and just worse off than it was before the floods. Yeah. Um, he says there's, there's a cleansing coming through. And okay. what better place for it to happen where it's already devastated to begin with yeah they get they get more attention yeah okay yeah is, is it car you think part of his karma well he says you know the energy lined up for it to happen there he's showing me the energy lined up and okay. and it could in the way eric is showing me it's like the energy of the people want something different you know, and, and as he's saying that, I remember when we flooded, I mean, oh, at the time it didn't me. feel good, but afterwards it was like the best thing that could have ever happened to us. Oh yeah. For me and my family, yeah. it was yeah. the best thing. Even I remember. Though, even though we lost stuff, it was the best thing. Yeah. You know, after, and Eric is saying like kind of the same thing for them. Um, okay. And it's causing people to, to give and help out and come together. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, will land reform become a reality for all white owned land and businesses? I don't know what that is about. Uh, I think there's a problem with uh, the government saying, okay, you whites who own land, you need to give that to, to the black South of Africa. So, somebody told me that. I don't even know if it's true, but well, I Eric's that. will land reform become a reality for all white owned uh, land and businesses? Well, Eric says things were stripped away from them. From the blacks? Yeah. Yeah. He says there's yeah. a lot of racism over there. Oh, God. Which you wouldn't think, but there is a lot of a lot of racism. Still? The, the African, yeah. He says, yeah, there's a lot going on there. That's why it's so unbalanced over there. Um, mm. He's. They're going to think of something to do to where... Um, like if people can like show like this was in the family or something like that. And, yeah. Um, these people will have the option to sell 
Uh, yeah, and, and move away. Oh, the la the blower guys here. Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> so you know, I I don't feel like it's going to be like okay now everything goes to you, but I do feel like there's going to be um, a restitution, and it could be where okay you sell your house, yeah. you get to keep the money, but the property now the Smiths get to move into that property and it's paid in full. It's interesting to say land reform in South Africa is the promise of land restitution to empower farm workers who now have the opportunity to become farmers and reduce inequality. This also ref uh, refers to aspects um, such as um, properly, uh, possibly white owned businesses. Proponents argue it will allow previously unemployed people to participate in the economy and better the country's economic growth. It also relates to restitution in the form of um, settling land claims of people who were forcefully removed from their homes. And okay, so that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. He says it's like the Native Americans here, you know? Yeah. All right. Will Julius Malema ever become president? I mean, there's free will, but quantum probability wise. Eric smiles and Eric smiles. So that's a yes. And I get that. I, I, Eric just smiles. So to me, he doesn't want to say yes, but it's like, oh, okay. I feel, I feel would like he'd be a good, some... would he be good for South Africa? Eric says yes. And when he says that, I feel like this person, is like preparing for that already okay. like preparing like what the changes or whatever um right. just just like how you do the changes because you can't just say i'm going to make changes they're going to i'm going to stop this i'm going to have this i'm going to do this you got to have like a business plan yeah you know, how it's going to be in. and i feel like this is what he's doing or she Okay, Julius, probably a guy. But yeah, yeah, Ju yeah, guy. Will anything happen to stop farm murders? Apparently, there's people breaking in and murdering farmers and their families. I think, but and why is that happening? Is it because of the whole land restitution inequality thing, or Eric says some of it is that, but it really isn't that because. Eric says if it was really all of that, they wouldn't be doing that because it, it just wouldn't, they just wouldn't do it that way. Um, because they're very smart from the people that it was taken from. They're not, Eric just shows me they're not, that's not them. There might be one or two that do that, but he's saying they're not that way. Um, but it's, the lower the lower energy the frequency you know it's like they um, he says fear greed pain hurt scared of being without yeah somebody starving and they see where a loaf of bread is so they're going to go steal it and um and erickson's drugs are rampant there um which i mean the rampant everywhere but when he said that like drugs like there's a and they make the, there's a kind of drug over there where they it's man made like they concoct things together, oh. and, and these people are really he says are they're wired out on it, and so they do oh. things that aren't very nice. Oh my god! So will they stop? Um, Eric says, you know, it's almost. He says, yes, it will slow down, but that's that takes time, you know, and yeah. uh, he says it's almost like they they will start thinking of ways to better protecting themselves well it sounds like all of south africa most of it is just dark negative energy mm -hmm. and you know the economy being bad I'm sure that's part of it you know yeah and well, there's, the not, there's not farm murders there's not fairness going on over there yeah it doesn't sound like it there's a no. in, so much inequality still in spite a lot of, of slavery Eric says a lot of slavery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of slavery? With work, people working and stuff like that, you know, and um, there's a lot of slavery. Isn't that um, illegal there? Of course. God. But you get desperate people, um, people who are very uneducated yeah. because of their income bracket and stuff and 
you know, they, they, they're desperate for whatever fear keeps them, you know, and so, starvation, yeah. and then also too, human trafficking is real rampant over there. Oh gosh. And that's a form of slavery right there. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a, there's a, a swinging door, Eric shows me in South Africa, where the human trafficking goes in and goes out. Mm. And the way he shows, he says, so they bring some in and then they ship some out. Oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in 2024, in the 2024 elections, will there be a change in the government of South Africa? Eric says, yes, there will be, there will be. For the better or the worse or the sta or status quo? Eric says, sure. Eric says for the better, um, it's going to be a nasty Ugh. election, kind of probably kind of like what we had here. Mm. And I'm not on either side. I'm just saying. No, no. So, um, but yeah, but you know, um, but I, I don't know. I just feel like the way Eric is showing me and it's like, there's a they're already strategically planning for all of that you know they're getting all their ducks in a row they're just making sure everything is solid okay so if anything for the better yes for the better it's good yes for the better like they're really doing like a business plan of what could come up won't come up um, if anything leaks out about their past they can they'll address it yeah but yeah okay because i don't feel like anybody has anything horrible but um you know but we like to make a big deal if somebody 18 slept with a soon to be 18 year old or something you know what i mean yeah. they've been oh, dating yeah. for, and they've been dating for a year or something you yeah. know we like to turn that into a huge, big scandal yes yes or, the, or a dui or not that that's everything yeah but Little. but even a DUI that happened 20, 30 years ago yeah. and, and they're not doing it anymore or whatever. So yes. So okay. they'll be able to handle it, Eric says, but they're really mapping the way, he says. Good. Is the school for girls that Oprah opened there in the best interest of those South African girls or is it a front for something not on the up and up? Eric says it gives them a, a chance to life. So it's, it's a good thing. It's not like it, sex no, trafficking operation no, no. or money laundering. Okay. No, Eric says no. It's really, it's a safe haven, really, for a lot of them. Good. Yeah. Good. You go, girl, Oprah. Um, anything else about that? Well, you know, um, there's been scandalous stuff about that school or schools I don't know how many she has but you know there's been scandalous stuff you know and things that come out and you know you got to remember you got there's a lot of people working there yeah so you know they're but I've from what Eric says they are addressing whatever has come up in the past and taking care of it and I feel like there's more um uh, checks and balances there going on as well okay. and i feel the way he says it's like these girls have like a he's like a, a button like or something like they can push or call or something if things aren't right if there's oh, wow. stuff going on so they have a safety button or You're something talking about I don't sexual know. abuse right yeah just anything like that you anything. know like okay. yeah that can come in you know um interesting and yeah. it's eric just, and i'm sure it's not a button but that's what eric is showing me it's something like they have a, a resource safety where they can man. go yeah oh, where they yeah. can go mm -hmm. uh is it true that white genocide is happening in south africa Hmm. Eric says, yeah. Mm, wow. How significant is that? I mean, how many people, uh, white people have died so far? Not that it is anything compared to genocide right. in other races, but. Eric says, mm, not as many as 
people think or read, but there's 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 stuff in there. Yeah, who's doing it? An the other side, individual. Yeah, the other. Uh, well, no, the other side of that. It's like the the other side of like the deep state it's the other side of that the anger part at what they're doing and then they oh, so you okay. got so you got two Fact. dense en two dense energies mm -hmm. doing opposite stuff you know to each other okay yeah and it's anger it's fear it's just hate it's Jeez. it's whatever you know okay uh the energy crisis in south africa load shedding i don't know what that is is mm -hmm. crippling the country is there any higher perspective guidance solution for this itch issue? Let me look up load shedding while you're. Well, Eric says we need to check into, you know, every country needs to check into where they're getting their energy source of whatever it is we're, we're getting our energy from them okay. and, start, and not purchase anything from them, even though it's pennies on the dollar, not to go that route. Okay. Let's see, um, load shedding. South Africa has used load shedding or rolling blackouts, I guess, to conserve electricity since 2008. But current outages are worse anyone that could uh, remember. So ESCOM, I don't know what that is, announced that the level two load shedding would be re-implemented from February the 2nd to February 7th, 2022, due to the breakdown of two generating units at Kusile and Kindle power stations. And then level four load shedding was announced due to breakdowns taking uh, breakdowns uh, taking 15,439 milliwatts out of the national grid. So I guess it's rolling blackouts. Yeah, me. but Eric says, but we're buying energy or whatever from them. Okay. So they don't have enough for their own. Oh. And then he's saying, also, too, where those rolling blackouts are, are not where it affects certain people. Oh, it only affects the, the impoverished? Pretty much, Eric says, yeah. And the inequality, jeez. Uh, all right. Will South Africa ever heal from the racism and apartheid from both sides? Eric says yes, but it's not going to happen in 10 years and, and probably not, you know, we're not going to be fully healed from that, you know, for it's going to take some decades to get to that point because you got to remember, he says, these are thousands of years that this stuff has been going on. When do you think it will start getting better? Well, Eric says it's starting to get better now. We just don't see any results. But um, Eric says in five years, you're going to start seeing some things that are a little different. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's like almost like um, where there's equality, where everybody can go to school. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to start seeing things like that or, um, or where they teach and show people how to have more food, grow their own food or, mm -hmm. or and things like that and um and do things like that and and then people are he says um and then we stop buying things from places over there that create slavery or oh, yeah. oh. you know um child labor and stuff like that okay. yeah and that will come out he says you know we'll get more to know to like who's doing what or whatever and he says just like, I don't remember when it was when Nike was oh, yeah. do, doing whatever and th that blew that up. And so Nike stopped, supposedly. Yeah. I don't know, but that's what Eric is saying. Yeah, so we're told. Mm -hmm. um, will it be the change in governance that brings that change, that more notable change in five years? Eric says it's going to it's going to be a collectiveness of that because it will because they will feel like now they have someone to back them up, you know, someone to support them because it's one thing he says to want to do this. And then you don't have the police department, the government, that, the oh, yeah. city officials, whatever it is they have. There's no support. So it's like, why do anything? Yeah. If you if you have the supposed support system uh, being just so corrupt. Right. Know. 
And that's going to get chiseled away, Eric says, you know. Um, he says they'll either croak, get sick, or get really busted like okay. that prime minister in the UK. Oh, yeah. They got dismissed. Yeah. All right. Is South Africa actually where humans originated? Eric says no. Cool. Was it alien hybrids that was the origin? Uh, origin? Yes. Anunnaki and all that? Okay. Yes. So that would be in um, Pal Palestine, maybe? Or, um, yes, around in that area. Oh, where's it been? Uh, the, I don't know. But Eric's, he's showing okay. me where, yeah, he's, he says yes. Okay. Over in that region, yes. Okay. The San tribe, S A N, of South Africa holds the oldest DNA. They also have amazing healers and have rituals that make them travel throughout dimensions. You want to talk about that, Eric? San tribe holds the oldest DNA. Well, let's talk about that and then we'll go on to their the amazing healing and rituals and traveling through dimensions. Eric is like, they're kind of like the Bigfoot here, you know, how they can travel in and out of dimensions. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but um, but they're not scary looking per se. But he says they're a threat to people. Because they're different or because powerful? Or? Yeah, because they know that they, that they are very powerful and they have, they know, they see right through all this stuff. And, um, but Eric says um, they're from another space, another space, you know, and um, he's not, I don't even get like where, I don't even think it's a planet on this. That oh, it's from another in. dimension maybe? or Yes, yes. And it's, um, but Eric says, um, like they were here, like back when um, Eric is showing me like the pyramids, when those people were here oh, okay. and, 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 and even before that, you know, doing things and, so Eric says, you know, they're um, also to South Africa has some very sacred land there. Eric mm. is saying it's very, some very sacred land there. And, um, and he says, well, everybody knows that he goes, cause look at all the animals that roam over there. Yeah. Yeah. And what uh, makes it sacred? Is it like they have vortices there that are portals to other well, there are portals there, but the, the energies of all the animals there, you know, uh -huh. that frequency that they all bring. And he says, these people know, the sand people know, because they can feel what's going on. He's showing me by their feet. They feel the vibration. Oh, wow. And he says, so they, they know. And it's like, he's showing me like, those people just walk the earth, so to speak. And they don't get eaten by the wild animals and all this stuff when they're out in that arena or whatever. But um, he says they're completely harmless. And I know uh, Eric says that some people feel like that they are harmful, but it's because they're so powerful that people get threatened by them. Yeah. Um, Eric says they can heal anything and everything. Wow. That's how they, that's their existence. And they know how to, but he says, the, the really cool thing is, is they know how to shift their energy inside to block any kind of diseases coming to them. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they're masters at energy mani manipulation, I guess, transmutation of energy. Eric said, yes, they know how, but he says they're very connected to their to source energy to who they really are. They're very connected to that. So let's talk about their DNA. Is there any galactic DNA like Anunnaki or Pleiades or whatever, any, anything like that? What about this old DNA? Eric says, yeah, it's definitely galactic. And I'm asking him when you said Anunnaki or Pleiadians or something. I don't really feel like he's saying it, it's Pleiadians. And when you say Anunnaki, you know, I just, um, I don't get a hundred percent of that, but I feel like there's a relationship there with the Anunnaki's, but whoever, but it's like the Anunnaki's and then there's an older one here. Okay. And, um, 
and I don't know, Eric's not giving me a name, or if he is, I'm not hearing it. But um, he says it, it, they come from a place of nothing but love and um, balance is what he's saying, balance. Yeah, are they alien hybrids, you think? Or did I already ask that? Or did I just think it in my head? I don't remember if you did. Um, Eric says they are alien hybrids. You know, they are, you know. Um, but Eric says they came here because... It was already seen how what a disaster we were going to do. Yeah. After a certain amount of time, so they like said, "Okay, well, we'll go there and help." Because I feel yeah. like they're helping to keep a balance. Well, they need to work harder. I know to <laughs> help keep, you know. Sorry, Sandra. To keep an earthquake from opening, you know. Wow. Mm. All right. Two more questions. Cape Town has the Circle of Saints as well as a major energy point similar to Bali. Maybe that's a vortex. I don't know. Is there anything more to this spirit, spiritually or energetically? Cape Town, the circle of saints and a major energy point similar to Bali. Eric says, you know, these portals that are around or these energy places or whatever, he says they all talk to one another. Hmm. You know, it's, um, they, they just, they speak a language, a frequency to one another. And he says they're there for, there's a purpose why they're at those places. Um, you know, and sometimes they're in places that are not the best places that you would think one would be, but they're there because of the energy that's going in and that's going out. Um, He says, you know, there is, um, it's like a, he shows me, it's like a, an open door for, I, he's showing me like how people go through different dimensions and go through there and stuff like that. Oh, and some people know about it and some people don't. And yeah. I'm going to have to look that up because I don't know anything about it. But, well, I don't yeah. either. but I mean, why is it in Cape Town? Because, yeah. because um, it needs to be there, he said, because of oh. the energy that's around there. Yeah. It, it, okay, so that's where this kind of energy is needed? Yeah, Eric says yes, because of, and, and I get like Cape Town isn't the most serene, whatever place to be or whatever. That's what okay. I'm feeling from Eric. And this is why he says this is why it's needed there because yeah. what better place, you know, it's like having a neighborhood full of crime. What a better place is to put a police station right there. So that, Oh yeah. More, more I get you. People, yeah. That's what he's showing me. Great analogy. Last question. I want, I wanted to ask about starving children. When some mm -hmm. organizations ask for donations on TV, it is heartbreaking. The images. I, I always want to help. I like donate to that. I, I just don't know if I'm just, if it ends up in the right hands or if it's just all corrupt. So is that, are most of these corrupt? Well, Eric says, all these places are really nonprofit. So that means you, at the end of the year, you can't have a profit on the books. So you have yeah, to- That doesn't mean that they can't siphon it off for themselves. So he tells me um, who's paying for the commercials, yeah. you know, and stuff. So, you know, that's where some of the money goes. And which, as he says, I'm like, well, yeah, you have to get the information out there. Yeah. But he says, but there also is a, an administrative staff that does get an income. Yeah, of course. We have to do it. that. And I feel like some of them get a nice income. Um, but Eric says some of the money does go to them, you know. Okay. And of course, they, the kids. you know, he, the advertisement is very powerful and effective. So they pick the worst of the worst to tie on your heartstrings, mm. music on there, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like the animal ones that, what's your favorite? Yeah. Oh, God, so, um, but Eric says, you know, look for organizations that where the majority of the money goes to these places. How do you find that out? Eric says you can Google like which nonprofit is the best, you know, for okay for feeding. He says you can you can 
then get you know get a better view of who's supporting who more. Did you find that. out? Well, the director gets this, the this gets that, this, and here's what goes to the the yeah. marketing. Here's what comes down to the kids. Can you find that? Yeah. Out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He says it's all out there. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So, what can we do as a collective to stop child hunger, or all hunger? in the 21st century. Now, Eric talked to me recently about how it's, you know, abundance is infinite. It, the scarcity right. is an illusion. With food, it's more about distribution. It's just not all going to the right places. And, you know, people like restaurants throw out ugly produce. Yeah. Of course, now we have people trying to sell ugly produce and they just, there's just so much waste. And well, stuff. Eric says, that's it. That's it. There's a lot of waste and nobody, um, he says, nobody is going, oh, what do I do with this? Where can I go put it? Yeah. You know, so the restaurants don't want to give it away to anybody because they don't want that lawsuit, that food poisoning. Uh -huh. But he says, but that's a, a screen to hide behind because of the laziness of going, doing some extra footwork. So Eric says, um, for the people who are really passionate about that, start a movement start going to these places where they're wasting food bread places restaurant places grocery stores and all that and start doing something and gather it up put in a c-130 and or whatever you call it you know, or find it people who will will do it i was listening to a podcast um that came out in 2020 or 2021 about some young guys from college you know couldn't do college so they dropped out and they started, the, it's on the West Coast of the U.S. where they started seeing this tons and tons of waste of food going to waste. So they now have trucks. It's a, it's a, a business where they have truckfuls of food and they distribute it to all these people who can't have food, oh, you know, that don't, can't afford it. And it's just, and it's really good food, he says, because he said um, a lot of the farmers, their food goes to waste. Yeah. That's so true. Eric says, so start, you know, that's how you start or start going to your local representative and mm -hmm. asking what, what is being done with this? What, what can we do? Yeah. Sounds great. It, it and effort. it's a lot of work. It's it a lot takes of work. effort. It does take effort. <sighs> well, I wish I had more than 24 hours in the, the day, but I yeah. know. And, and so when he says, when Eric says it takes effort, it's like, do we really want that six pack or would we rather sit at home? I know. Yeah. Yeah. And he's talking about six pack on the stomach. Eric says, you better clarify the six pack. <laughs> so <laughs> he's talking, talking about, he's talking about the stomach, you know? Okay. So. Well, I don't got one of those. Well, I do probably, but it's all covered by fat. So yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Thank you, Denise. And thank you, Eric, you guys, Denise Ramon at deniseramon.com. And I will talk to you later. Be sure you, Smash that notification bell, subscribe, and share. Maybe you share to people who are movers and shakers. They can help with this child hunger or general global hunger issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. I thought this was going to be short, but Eric. It's all right. Well, Eric says he loves you. and I love um, you, baby. I don't know if y'all are going to do something this weekend or whatever, but Eric says he's right there. So oh, we're going to go out for, for an early birthday celebration tonight for Annika. That's it. Okay, that's what he's okay. So he's gonna be there with y'all. Finally coming home from Austin. She's in the middle of her neurology residency. We never see her. So this is gonna be whoa. Fun. Whoa. All right. I love you. Much love to you. And Eric says he loves you, Mom. Bye. I love you and your family. Bye. Bye. Take care, hon. You too.